So how did it feel, you know, to know you want to do, you know, sports journalism in high school? You go to college, you work at, you know, all of these publications, and then suddenly you get hired at a national publication like ESPN. It was a little surreal, and it took a while for it to really settle in that I worked at ESPN, which, you know, still remains the preeminent sports media company uh, in America. Um, And it, it it was a big adjustment. I mean, it wasn't just adjusting to the audience and to what I was writing. It was adjusting to the fact that, suddenly who say who says it is important as what it said because those are intertwined at ESPN you become a celebrity journalist just by nature of the platform being so big you're on TV um, you're doing a bunch of multimedia things and so you become almost your own entity and I had been uh, taught up until that point or had come from the school of as a journalist you're not the story but you know as I learned over the course of 12 years there were more occasions than not where I was the story as much as what the story actually was. Well, in 2008, you wrote the piece about the Celtics. Mm -hmm. You said uh, rooting for the Celtics is like saying Hitler was a victim. Uh, What did that mean exactly? What's the context of that? Well, the context is I was stupid. That's the context, (laughs) is that, um, you know, it's probably the most embarrassing moment of my career. I was suspended for it, and... I deserved all the backlash, um, and you know there are certain names that you just don't play and make jokes about, and he's one of them. And even though it was not, as I have to remind people, because if you just Google, like for a long time, my name and Hitler came up together, mm. and and that is not the way that right. you want to be memorialized, right? And so um, I I hate having to say to people. What I said was not pro Hitler, okay? <laughs> All right. So the whole point was that I was trying to be funny, and it was a great lesson for me as a journalist on a couple of fronts. One, being funny in a column is not for everybody. That, you know, I can crack a joke here too, but that that's not my thing. The whole column was meant to be satirical and funny. Uh, just about how the Celtics, you know, once they got KG, Ray Allen, Rondo, I grew up in Detroit. We hated the Celtics. <laughs> and as many people know, there was a racial dynamic there to hating the Celtics. There were a lot of black people who did not like the Celtics mm-hmm. because of how they were positioned against the Lakers and the sort of racial dynamics at play that we didn't even realize were at play. So I grew up, I grew up hating the team mostly because they were a, a rival of Detroit's. And the closest I've ever come to crying in my whole life is when Bird stole the ball from Isaiah in 87 because it should have been a three-peat for the Pistons, but instead had to settle for two for back-to-back titles. But nonetheless, um, it was a great lesson in trying to do something that really isn't your strong suit. Um, and the other thing is it was an off-day column. This was not something that was off a game. It was just an off-day column. And the truth was I had not – thought through a real idea. And so it was lazy journalism and lazy journalism will get you exposed every time. And I'm thankful that happened in 2008 and not in 2018 because I might've got fired. And as much of a firestorm as that created at that moment, um, it was probably the biggest lesson I've ever learned about this, about this business. And it, you know, you'd asked me before about being at ESPN and what that meant. That's when I knew that being at ESPN was much different than any place else. I mean, I had, you know, people not only calling for me to be fired, it was a national story. People had picket signs at the the Celtics game. Really? Um, okay. Asking ESPN to fire me. One um, radio station in Boston, they um, publicized my number. And so I had people calling me and it oh, was wow. threatening me. It was, it was a big ordeal. And so it just again, crystallized that, you know, this is this is the show. This is major leagues now. So you have to be very careful about the messages you send, about what you say, and um, knowing that you're writing the history of your career at this place. Because, you know, people didn't know what I did before ESPN. They knew me at ESPN because of the reach and the magnitude. So it was not a platform to be careless about. No, absolutely. Okay, so during this, you know, the early ESPN days, you were you were writing um, articles, but were you actually on TV as well? I was. So um, it, timing is everything, and I got to ESPN in November of two thousand and six. 
I first, uh, I had done Outside the Lines a couple of times before, and I, I had even done Stephen A. Smith show, quite frankly, um, once or twice. But um, they were, you know, ESPN, they have so many different, you know, programs and, and, and sports shows. So they'd asked me within the first few months I was there to be a guest on a show that was called Cold Pizza. And during the debate portion of the program to debate Skip Bayless and um, because Woody Page had just left. And, you know, that first week doing that for the course of an entire week uh, sort of changed my television prospects at ESPN because next thing I know, they wanted me to do at least one week a month. Then other shows are calling me and next thing I know, I'm doing Jim Rome is Burning and Sports Reporters and Around the Horn and all these different shows because... Uh, you know, one producer sees you somewhere and they said, hey, you know, she looks like she could string together a couple of coherent sentences. Let's see if she can do that on our show. So I came there just to be a columnist. And I look up two years in and half of my job is writing. Half of my job is television. And it was TV was never anything I took seriously. It was not something that I intended to pursue. And it just kind of happened. I had an accidental broadcast career. Yeah, you just ran with it. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, <laughs> I, I guess out. what what helped me was that it helped me that I didn't take TV that seriously because it always allowed me to be myself because I wasn't worried about it as this this is going to be my moneymaker down the line. So I have to appear a certain way on TV. I was just always just me and that seemed to work. No, absolutely. I mean, especially these days, print, you know, journalists, you can't name too many that everyone's heard of. Right. You see what I'm saying? Right. Whereas TV journalists have kind of become ubiquitous. Right. Just is what it is. Yeah, no, I yeah. mean, the television gives you a, a much broader reach, generally speaking, than what you can do as a writer. Unless you, you know, kind of uh, become one of those once-in-a-generation writers, it's hard, you know, yeah. to get a certain name recognition. And so TV gives you that. 